on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about common text styling approaches for interactions in Harlow 3.3. So let's look at some examples here. I have right here example one, and you'll notice all of these examples are labeled passages within this. And let's go ahead and immediately start from example one, and I want to play this. Now we have two links in this passage. Can you tell the difference between their outcomes? And I don't know about you, but looking at this, it becomes a little difficult. What does A do versus B? I just see A and I just see B. Now let's move back over here to this view. We can immediately see through the arrows that it just moves to A and B. But looking at these as a reader perspective, I don't really know what this means. I can't see from looking at the text itself what the potential outcomes of either of these interactions would be. And this is where text styling can start to come into an approach we can use to better convey information visually using text, again, the primary form of communication, to communicate what the differences between these outcomes would be. Why would I choose one over the other as a reader? So coming back over here, let's move over to example two. Now, example one right here, we just have A and B, and there's no real difference between them. But one of the ways we can start to indicate some difference is using additional symbols. So in example two, notice right here, I have additional text, so additional symbols right here. And I have right here a corresponding verb. What is the result of this action? So the result of this action would be to remember girlfriend. Now in this case, notice I'm using the pointing to form of links and the outcome is the same. You're still going to A as a reader, just as you were over here in example one, but now the thing they click on, the interaction is described better. I understand, or at least I could appear to understand as a reader, okay, well remember, colon girlfriend, somehow these words are connected and there is a greater description now associated with that interaction. Again, giving a reader more information about what the potential outcome is of some type of interaction they may do. Now notice they go to the same place. Example one and example two end on the same passages A and B, but now there's a little more extra text of this. So the difference between example one and example two is example two now has a greater description and it's also using the pointing to form of creating links. So let's step in this even more. What if I want to make a difference between an action a character is taking, potentially remembering or something like that, and potentially a choice a reader is making, kind of differentiating, making a difference between the two. So let's move over to example three. Example three follows from example two, but now uses parentheses. And let's actually go and play this. So I'm with this selected over here. I'm going to come back to the passage, start story from here, move the starting little rocket ship over this. Let's move over to build and play. Now notice with the parentheses, there is a visual difference between these. And in addition, there's also additional text, but the outcome is the same. And this is where the kind of text styling comes into play. We are styling the text to communicate different possible outcomes to a potential reader. They can understand, oh, this particular link is connected to remember girlfriend as opposed to just A as it was in the first example. So let's continue this theme, but now let's do a little more styling. So potentially we could add a greater description, example two, we could also introduce parentheses, example three, and we could also do something slightly different. So let's kind of build across these. Looking now at possibility of styling things, that is using the kind of styling available in Harlow to do something. Let's move to example four. In example four, we have still building off the same thing from example two, greater description, but now using these weird slashes. And notice it's styled slightly different than the passage itself. Well, this is the use of up here, styles. So I am using italics right here. Notice italics as a possible option. And to apply it, I selected what it had, and I click that button right here to italics to apply it. So let's jump over to example four and look at what this looks like. So I'll go back over here, with example four, move the start over, go over to build and play. Now look at the text styling is different than it was previously. So potentially if we want to convey that extra information, we could use a greater description, 
that's step one, perhaps. Step two, maybe use parentheses if that makes sense to us as an author to convey that meaning to a reader, but potentially we could also use italics to act in the same way. Notice in this case, there's a difference between the styling of Remember Girlfriend versus the styling of the link immediately underneath it. But the result is still the same. So we're conveying some kind of extra information. Look, this link looks different than that link to a reader that might kind of clue them into the potential of this interaction. So what are other ways we can do this? Well, let's think a little bit about how italics might be used in other works. If you're kind of familiar with italics, you might have seen situations where it kind of conveys other information. You might have also seen the use of bold in a similar way. So example five does that. Let's move over to this. Notice in this case, it's presenting quotations right here, kind of quoted speech. And then inside of that is something called Gold Coast over to term Gold Coast. Now, if you've encountered kind of video games that have a role-playing approach, you might have noticed this particular styling. And I'm going to go ahead and I've moved the start over to example five, and let's go over to build play. And notice it stands out differently. And when I put over my cursor over it, I notice that this is an additional thing. Now, there might be some cases when you want to convey something about the interaction, and again, the potential result of an interaction to a reader. In which case, you might use italics to kind of indicate an action or remembrance. You might also use bold in a similar way to indicate an important term or an important concept, or in this case, an important location within the story. That way, the reader knows that if they click on Gold Coast in this particular example, they would see information related to the term, but not necessarily progress the story. Again, thinking through what are the primary means of communication between me as an author and someone else as a potential reader, we primarily use text in Twine. We also then present interactions through links. So how we style text and how we style links, as indicated in this video, kind of conveys that extra information. Are we using italics? Are we using colors? Are we using bold? And at least in this video, we're looking at italics and bold as particular options. So, okay. In this case, I might better understand, oh, this is connected to something having to do with a term or something having to do with something important to this because it's bold and it looks just slightly different. Now let's look at one last example over here, and I kind of reinforce this concept. And notice I'm using bold in a particular way to kind of reinforce that this is an important term, and also to indicate to a reader who may not know the particular style conventions of my story to indicate, oh, this is something different. So let's move over to example six. I'll go ahead and move start from here over to this passage, and then build and play. And notice the repeating use of this style. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually potentially even style it in a different color to really indicate its importance. And you might have come across this if you played a number of video games that do a similar approach. You might see an important word in green or red or blue or some other color to indicate a difference between either white text or black text, depending on the video game and their own style presentations. But in either case here, we notice in particular that bold is used to make the term stand out and also to communicate, again, thinking about how we're using text as a primary form of communication, some extra information. So let me review what I've talked about in this video. We understand that the primary form of communication between author, me writing a story, and you, potentially a reader, or someone else reading a different story, is text. So how we style that text becomes important about what we're communicating. Are we communicating different dialogue? Are we communicating paragraphs or interactions or other things like that? As part of interactions in particular, we're interested in conveying the potential outcome of a player doing some interaction. And again, the primary form of interaction is clicking on links. That's how we're creating the connection between these passages you can see before you. So thinking through those interactions, we want to give the potential reader some little way for extra information. What does it mean if you click on this versus you click on that? So some of the ways we can do it is we can add better descriptions of things. Remembering the point two, we don't necessarily have to add more passages. We can use the point two format of creating links. We can also potentially use parentheses if we want to indicate this link does this thing versus this that other link that does something different. And potentially as this video presents, use italics to indicate a potential action that is different than progressing a story. And in the same way, using bold perhaps to indicate an important term 
or allowing the player to investigate a term or location or something else that doesn't necessarily progress the story. In all these cases, though, consistency is the most important thing. We want to convey consistent style information to a potential reader as they understand our story. If I click on bold, it does this. If I click on links that are italic, it does this. If I click on red or blue, it does these other things. And in all cases, again, being consistent across the board. Thanks for watching.